Hello everyone, good morning and uh, thank you all for gathering here. Today I'm going to talk about my work titled Rescue, a framework for automatic evaluation of knowledge-driven automatic summarization. I thank all my committee members for being here, Dr. Amit Shet, my advisor, Dr. Thomas Reinflesch, who is uh, joining us from NIH, and uh, Dr. Delroy Cameron, who is an alumnus of Noisa Center, and Dr. TK Prasad. So this is the work that I started as a part of my internship at uh, NIH with Dr. Ryan Flesch and his team. So I'm sure all of us are aware of the tool PubMed, which is used for searching biomedical literature. And for those of us who are not, uh, PubMed is a search service that queries the Medline database to find relevant documents for a uh, user's information need. And uh, Medline itself is a repository of uh, biomedical literature and contains of about uh, 25 million articles. So what is the problem with PubMed? Well, the problem of PubMed is that it um, represents the uh, search or uh, the results or the information as a list. So specifically, if a user was interested in finding uh, information about uh, migraine disorders, and he constructed this specific query and submitted it to Medline, um, this tool uh, would give us about 2,171 results. So this forces the user to search and sift through this large data set to find relevant answers. So even though the information or the answers are present, it uh, is not directly accessible. So to alleviate this problem, the research at uh, NIH, uh, Dr. Ryan Flesch and his team developed this tool called Semantic Medline for summarizing uh, biomedical literature. So for the same user query, uh, Semantic Medline, in addition to providing the results as a list, it also extracts the salient information or uh, salient information from the search result set and expresses the facts as a graph. In this way, the information is more directly accessible to the user. And from this graph, uh, which is made up of uh, facts or semantic predications, uh, the user can understand that uh, these facts about uh, migraine disorders, which is acetaminophen treats migraine disorders, sumatriptan treats migraine disorders, and topiramate prevents migraine disorders, amongst many other facts. So the motivation of this thesis is uh, specific to semantic medline, and it is that we are interested in automatically evaluating the summaries that are generated by semantic medline. We also want to identify the features that impact the quality of the summary, and we also want to understand how to improve the uh, semantic summaries that it generates. So the outline of this uh, talk is as follows. I'm going to start off by discussing automatic summarization and its types and also talk about the summarization in semantic medline. Then I talk about the summarization evaluation uh, and its uh, types. Um, I also discuss the different uh, data sets that I use in this work very broadly. And I go on to talk about the core of this research and I conclude with the evaluation results. So in the general scope of automatic summarization, an interesting question is, what is an effective summary in the first place so that you can quantify it for evaluation? Well, an effective summary is something that conveys the most important uh, information or the salient information from the source in a compressed and concise format. And there are two uh, types of automatic summarization or two techniques. The first one is extractive sum summarization and the second one is abstractive summarization. So extractive summarization is where the most important uh, sentences or content from the uh, input is added to the summary in an unaltered format. So the text is maintained as verbatim. And in abstractive summarization, the summaries are an abstract condensed representation of the source. So here you can see an example of an extractive summary. And uh, right here is an uh, abstractive summary example for the same. And semantic medline itself uh, adopts the abstractive summarization approach. So to give you a broad overview of how summarization takes place in semantic medline, uh, firstly we have the source documents uh, which are uh, which goes through a series of steps and along with the SEMREP API uh, it is uh, transformed into a conceptual representation or a list of semantic predications and then 
uh, in the reduction phase, there are four different uh, features that have been applied to uh, create the semantic summary. So I just want to go through these four steps because they are important to this work. So firstly, the first feature is relevance or relevancy. And as the name suggests, uh, it is a knowledge-based knowledge feature which includes uh, all semantic predications that are relevant to the uh, user's input topic into the summary. For example, for, uh, for the topic coronary artery disease or CAD, uh, this would be a relevant predication that is added to the summary because it talks about aspirin treating this disease. And the second feature is connectivity, which uh, ensures that uh, useful additional pro uh, uh, predications are added to the semantic summary based upon, uh, just like this one, based upon its connectedness to the relevant predications. Um, next is novelty, which is yet again a knowledge-based feature, which uses the metathesaurus for identifying uh, generic or uh, uninformative summaries that needs to be excluded. For example, uh, this specific uh, uh, predication is excluded from the summary because uh, here the object vascular disease is uh, uninformative, uninformative, meaning that it occurs higher up in the metathesaurus hierarchy. And finally, saliency. Saliency makes sure to add bias to predications that occur more frequently or facts that occur more frequently in the entire corpus. So one critical limitation of semantic medline is that uh, it is difficult to uh, evaluate the summaries that, it's gen that it generates. So how might one actually evaluate uh, automatic summaries or summaries in general? Well, the literature discusses about two types of or two techniques for uh, evaluation. The first one is intrinsic evaluation and the second one is extrinsic evaluation. Intrinsic evaluation is where a summary is compared to a human curated gold standard using different uh, document similarity metrics. And extrinsic evaluation is where uh, human judges assess the quality of a summary based on a, a secondary tasks such as search relevance uh, through a discrete scoring system. Semantic Medline itself, uh, for, for this case of Semantic Medline, uh, it makes sense for us to use uh, intrinsic evaluation because we have a gold standard data set that has been created and we leverage for this work. So uh, to talk about some of the work in the extractive summarization uh, space, um, the popular work by Netkova et al, which is titled Pyramid Approach, uh, take, uh, describes about crea creating extractive summaries using summary, summary content units. And uh, the work by Lewis et al talks about applying intrinsic evaluation for such extractive summaries uh, and what they state is that uh, the quality of a summary can be assessed by comparing the distribution of terms in the gold standard to the distribution of terms in the summary by applying document similarity metrics such as Kulbach, Leibler and Jensen Shannon's amongst many other. And what they have to report is that Jensen Shannon is the best metric for such a kind of evaluation because it's very comparable to how you humans would evaluate the summary. So in this work, what we are interested in is to apply similar kind of techniques in the abstractive summarization uh, space. Uh, here, we want to compare a semantic summary, which is uh, created using structured background knowledge, and the gold standard summary, which is in textual format. But as you can see here, uh, the, there's an evident uh, problem with the representation of the two summaries, which leads to a, a information misalignment. And we propose a prop, uh, possible solution here, which involves summary transformation. We want to approach this um, problem with two broad ideas, which is the first one uh, here is uh, we, we can use the words that co occur with the semantic predications in the summary to represent the meaning of the semantic predications based on the distributional semantics. And the second one is that by generating multiple summaries with features held out, we can effectively evaluate the impact of each feature. I th th this will become more evident as I talk. So these two broad, broad ideas are very consistent with my TC statement, which is a semantic summary can be understood and potentially improved by leveraging distributional statistics between the structured background uh, that comprises the semantic summary and the words uh, with which these uh, structured constructs co-occur across the corpus. 
So the proposed solution is along the lines that here you can see a semantic summary, which is nothing but a set list of predications. Um, so for each summary that is generated by semantic medline, we want to So what you can see here is a se semantic summary, which consists, which is nothing but a list of predications. And what we are interested in doing is to take the facts in this semantic summary and express it as a distribution of words with which the predications co-occur. And then we want to aggregate these words to form a bag of words model. By doing so, we can represent a semantic summary as a, a a semantic summary vector which can be later used for computing the similarities. So once we have the semantic summary, we want to compare it to the gold standard summary using the different metrics as suggested by um, the literature uh, to assess its quality. Uh, and later we apply this uh, other metrics to understand or to pinpoint which specific feature is influential in the quality of the summary. And here we want we state that uh, okay, here what we are stating is that the summary that is least similar to the gold standard has the most important feature. So to give you a broad idea of the different data sets that I'm using, here uh, the first thing is uh, Medline. Uh, which I mentioned is a repository containing of uh, containing 25 million articles um, of biomedical literature. The second is semantic predications, which are facts extracted from these uh, articles in Medline. Uh, then um, mesh headings, which is a hierarchy or a thesaurus that uh, contains um, medical subject headings, which are used for indexing the PubMed articles. And next is the UMLS, which contains uh, three components. The semantic network is responsible for uh, giving the relationships. Metathesaurus is the largest component of the UMLS, which contains of more than 300,000 concepts. And uh, the specialist lexicon is a lexicon of English and biomedical terms. So moving on to the system architecture that we, uh, this is the rescue system architecture that we developed. We first have the uh, user query processor, which is responsible for uh, constructing the query based on the user's input. And this query is passed on to the document selector, which retrieves all relevant documents from Medline matching the query. And this is passed on to the predication extractor, which uses the SEMREP API to extract facts from these documents. And then the uh, summarizer is responsible for applying the four features, which is uh, relevancy, connectivity, novelty, and saliency. To create, a uh, to create a summary. Then the concept mapper and the predications mapper are responsible for transforming the summary and uh, creating the initial bag of model, a uh, words model to be passed on to the vectorizer with, which, uh, with the use of which we can end up with a semantic summary vector. And then I discuss about creating the gold standard vectors which are later used for computing the similarities. Nishita, just make it very clear exactly what is new so either this, from scratch or right. So change. the initial part of the pipeline is uh, existing work, which I leverage for this research. And uh, I think uh, in, in the end, when I talk about the contributions, you can see uh, the exact uh, place where the efforts were put for this work. Yeah, I think I just go back two slides. I was there was something unintuitive, and so could you explain that. Yeah, this. Please say something like the summary. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I think. This will become evident when I discuss, uh, so this is when I talk about the similarity metrics. So this will become evident when I talk in the concluding slide. Yeah, this is. But, uh, but uh, just to put that into perspective a bit uh, further, uh, Dr. Prasad, um, the idea is that uh, what, we, what she does is she leaves out one of the features used to create the semantic summary. And across the 20 different experiments, uh, computes a, a root mean squared error uh, based on the set of cosine similarity and Jensen Shannon divergence and also the Euclidean distances. And then she leaves out uh, another feature and computes a root mean squared error and then compare uh, the two values against each other. And the idea is that 
the feature that is most important when, when held out, it will actually lead to a, a cosine similarity value that is, uh, that is smaller. Oh, okay. right? What will happen is the, the, the semantic summary will sort of move away from the gold standard because you've taken out this one important feature. So that is how you pick the important feature. Right. So that's how essentially you're trying to determine. No, that, and of course, uh, uh, performing it across multiple uh, queries, we make this statement. We test it for uh, different uh, queries and we are able to see that it's consistent. Right. I'm sure there will be some follow-up uh, details on this right. uh, when you get to the evaluation. So first, um, the user query processor module. So what is the user query in Rescue? Uh, user query is a uh, tuple containing of uh, five elements. The first one, L, is a label of an entity or a concept in the UMLS, for example, migraine disorders. C1 and C2 are mesh indexing terms which are used for searching uh, PubMed uh, citations. Uh, each PubMed citation is indexed using mesh headings by human annotators for uh, enabling search. DD is the date range of the documents, and UB is the upper bound, which is uh, the number of documents that we are um, interested in retrieving. And uh, here, by default, it is 5,000. And here you can see this is an instance of a query that was created. Um, this one is for migraine disorders with the five elements here. Then once this uh, query has been created, it's passed on to the document select selector which, uh, retrieve, which uses the Medline API uh, to retrieve all relevant documents that matches this user query. So for this specific uh, um, uh, for this specific work, we uh, created 20 search scenarios. As you can see here, this is a carefully compiled list of 20 diseases by uh, domain experts from NLM. Uh, it contains both uh, most frequent, frequently occurring diseases, or well uh, well known diseases, and uh, rare uh, rarely occurring diseases. And uh, we retrieve 5,000 documents in each case, and the others are uh, rarely occurring diseases, and, and hence uh, those were the number of documents we were able to retrieve. And then, <coughs> once we have uh, this list of uh, uh, articles or citations, it's passed on to the semantic predications extractor. Here you can see a uh, snippet of text from one of the documents, and uh, uh, SEMREP is responsible for extracting such facts. Uh, here the subject and the object are metathesaurus concepts and uh, the relationship uh, treats is derived from the semantic network. Then finally this is sent uh, to the automatic summarizer which is responsible for adding the four feature rules as previously mentioned and it makes sure of eliminating any extraneous facts and also decides which uh, predications end up in the summary and which don't. Here, the first four predications are added to the summary, while the second two are not added uh, based on um, criteria such as uh, being uninformative or generic in, um, generic in nature. And uh, after doing this, we end up with this semantic uh, <coughs> summary, which consists of a list of predications. So, uh, however, uh, we have this uh, semantic summary uh, as previously mentioned, it is very challenging to evaluate such a kind of uh, summary generated by semantic medline. Hence, we take this, uh, the following steps, the summary transformation steps to overcome the uh, information misalignment problem as previously mentioned. For this, uh, we do the, four, uh, the following four steps. The first is we get <coughs> all the documents for each concept in the semantic summary. And then we create the bag of words model, words model for each of the concepts. So what is a bag of words model? In the most simplistic sense, here is an example of a snippet. Uh, and the bag of words model for a document is nothing but a list of tuples containing the word with, along with its frequency. And this bag of words model can be used to convert a document into a sparse vector representation by just replacing the terms by its uh, ID. 
in the feature space. So once we have this back of words model, we aggregate it uh, for each concept occurring in the semantic summary, and then we use the IDFs to create the TF-IDF vector for any given semantic summary. So in order to create both the sparse uh, vector representation and also the IDFs, we need to create a dictionary of the entire corpus. So this is a broad uh, description of how we create the, go about creating the dictionary. First, we iterate over each document within the corpus. Then we tokenize each sentence that occurs in, uh, in these documents. And then we add this, these tokens to a dictionary, which you can visualize as a index. And we also maintain its index and also the IDs of the documents that it occurs in. So at this point, we have a semantic summary that has been transformed into a vector representation. So to now to move on to talk about the gold standard data set, these were three resources, which is UpToDate, Micromedics, and ACP Spark Medicine. These were three resources that were identified by domain experts as authoritative sources of drug treatments for diseases. So we use the Jericho crawler to crawl textual information from these three resources, which were present in both structured and unstructured format. <coughs> Then what we do is um, we take the following four steps to create uh, gold standard vectors, uh, which is similar to the process of how we created the semantic summaries, um, semantic summary vectors. So first we trade over uh, each document in the gold standard summary. Then we tokenize each sentence occurring in every document. Then we create a bag of words model in a similar um, manner. And then finally, uh, for each of uh, for the IDFs, we create um, the TF IDF vectors by using the IDFs uh, to represent the vectors for uh, gold standard sums. In doing so, what we realized was that the gold standard <coughs> vectors were uh, sparse in nature, and in order to overcome this uh, data sparsity issue, we enhance the gold standard vectors using context context clues from the corpus. For this, first we metamap the gold standard document and then we repeated step two, three, and four as previous, previously mentioned. So just uh, to... So, Ashita, I, I have a question here. So um, I've, I've noticed that you have talked about um, in your two broader ideas, I think you said one of them is to uh, use word core currents to represent the uh, context of a semantic predication, right. but here you seem to be discussing creating a bag of words for each concept and not for a semantic predication. Would you like to give some insight as to why you made that choice uh, to go with uh, creating the context using concepts as opposed to the semantic predications? No, I didn't get to why we create the yeah, right. yeah so the bag of work model here it's created uh, for each concept in the semantic summary right right and uh, in one of the earlier slides I think you said that uh, one of your broad ideas was to represent uh, the context of a semantic predication in, in the summary in terms of the words that, that co-occur with it essentially creating a bag of words for a semantic predication uh, not for a concept. Right. Uh, what I'm asking is, can you give some insight as to why you've created the bag of words for a concept in your actual computation, as opposed to for a semantic computation? Um, I mean, I do you mean why we do? I mean, it's necessary to uh, represent a summary in such a format to. Uh, allow for comparison, comparing two uh, summaries. It's to align the two uh, summaries in a specific rep representation in order to perform the comparison. No, it's, it's right, right, that's fine. It, can you go back to, to the architecture slide? I think there's an important point there that uh, needs, to be, needs to be noted. This one? 
as well? Right, so in this architect, yes, in the architecture slide here, the concept mapper essentially will take a semantic summary mm -hmm. um, and take just the concepts represented in that summary and uh, represent each concept as a bag of words model based on the terms right. that co-occur with the concept. So the it's also, concept. It's also a predication mapper. Right. Right. So what's what what's the status of why have you not used that predication mapper as opposed to the concept mapper? I'm just trying to get you to. to so the concepts itself. So what I do is, um, for example, in a predication that says uh, aspirin treats migraine. Here, the concept that I am interested in is aspirin, which represents treatment or all the subjects which represents uh, the treatments for the particular disease migraine. And uh, these concepts are, con I mean, all these predications are constructed from structured uh, background knowledge. And I'm, you, I'm interested in only understanding the treatments, um, drug treatments or treatments in this case, which are represented as the concepts, which is the subject in this case. And I'm only interested in understanding um, a summary that, I mean, I create a summary just uh, comprising these uh, concepts and I later uh, convert the, I mean, do whatever transformation uh, and compute the sem semantic similarity. Is that, is that what you are? Uh... Uh, right, so I, I wonder if perhaps um, if you had uh, retrieved for each predication in the summary, if you retrieve all the documents that contain uh, the specific predication and then create the bag of words model uh, with terms that co-occur with that, if you may not end up having a, a data sparsity issue as well. And so it probably makes sense, at least in the beginning, to kind of relax the constraint for creating the bag of words model uh, with just the concepts as opposed to the, the full predication. Is that something that you experienced or? Right, I mean, uh, I, I think, I mean, I'm, I'm saying why I use the concepts instead of the semantic predication, but... Yes. That's the question. Right, that's what I mentioned, that I'm interested in understanding the treatments. So a, a predication would say, like for migraine disorders, it would say aspirin treats migraine, and it would be acetaminophen treats migraine, or sumatriptan treats migraine. So all I'm interested well, in these subjects, the co the concepts or the subjects that uh, occur in the predication, and I take well, these concepts and I create the bag of words. Well, right. So that that assumption <coughs> you're you're assuming then that um, all of the predications in your semantic summary uh, have uh, the same subject. And it's only the objects connected right. to that one subject that you're interested in. Is that necessarily true, or yes? In this work, it is because uh, we take a specific scenario, which is uh, drug treatments or treatments <coughs> for diseases, to uh, evaluate and uh, do the computation. We take a specific scenario in this case. Okay. All right. That that's fair. So just to recap what we have uh, done here, first we selected 20 diseases and constructed queries and generated semantic summaries for these 20 diseases. Then we transformed these semantic summaries into semantic summary vectors. And then we uh, re uh, extracted the gold standard uh, data and uh, represent transform them as gold standard TF-IDF vectors. And uh, step five and six is what I'll be talking next, where we compute the uh, semantic similarity to assess the quality, and then we identify which specific feature is uh, important or influential in uh, generating summaries. So the three different metrics that we used here are cosine similarity, Euclidean distance, and jensen shannon um, To talk about um, cosine similarity, uh, as you are, so if S prime is the semantic summary vector and the T prime is the gold standard vector, 
then uh, the uh, cosine similarity would be the dot products between these two vectors divided by the product of its magnitudes. So, uh, um, as everybody knows, what cosine similarity is that if two uh, vectors are similar or identical, then the value will be closer to one, and if it is dissimilar, it is uh, zero. And then uh, Euclidean distance is a distance matrix or a divergence matrix. Uh, taking the same two vectors, the Euclidean distance would be the uh, square root of the summation of the square differences of the two points, two corresponding points in the vectors. So for a uh, Euclidean distance given two vectors, if they are identical, the value will be zero, and the more uh, dissimilar or uh, further apart they are, the value will be greater. So with these um, metrics, we were able to uh, generate the following information. The first is the comparison of the semantic similarity with the leap and out approach. And this is the Euclidean distance with the leap and out approach. And then we have the Jensen channel. So for each uh, baseline summary, a baseline summary which is represented in blue is something that was created without removing any features. And the red, um, line is the uh, feature, uh, the summary that was generated using uh, or uh, leaving out the relevancy, relevant predications in the summary and uh, so on and so forth. We created a summary for each, with each feature held out. But with this information, it is hard to discern which specific feature is influential in uh, creating the summaries. And hence, we go on to compute the root mean squared error. So to put things into perspective, we are just going to consider the baseline summary. So we have 20 queries for which we uh, compute or generate 20 baseline summaries, semantic summaries, and then we have uh, 20 uh, gold standard summaries. We end up with uh, 20 cosine similarity values uh, computed by um, um, yeah, comparing these two, uh, each of these two, uh, each of the summary from both sets. And then we have 20 Euclidean distance values and 20 Jensen Shannon values. So a root mean squared error is computed as follows, which is the summation of the square, square of the similarity scores of each of the similarity scores, like uh, cosine similarity or uh, Euclidean distance, divided by the total number of values in the set, which is 20, and we take the square root of it. So what we would like to see here is that for the cosine similarity, for example, if the most important feature is held out, then uh, for each of the 20 queries, we expect the RMSC value to be really low. And that's exactly what we see. And for Euclidean distance and jensen shannon divergence, which are, uh, we expect the opposite uh, to happen. So Having performed this uh, evaluation across these uh, different uh, queries and with these <coughs> different metrics, uh, we can see that for cosine similarity and Jensen Shannon, that the saliency feature is um, most important. While for Euclidean distance, we see that uh, connectivity is the most important feature, and the second um, most important feature is saliency. And given given this, we can conclude that saliency feature is the most important for or most influential in uh, creating summaries, creati creating informative semantic summaries. So, okay, so can you show me the number? I mean, we're confusing it. So, so the smaller the less error, right? Mm -hmm. So small, so here for cosine similarity, uh, what we did is we took the 20 values we aggregated or computed a single RMSE score using those 20 values, and mm -hmm. this is what it is. So what it means is that this is a summary that was generated by removing all salient predications. Mm -hmm. And then we have the vector created for that, and then we have a gold standard vector. And so this value is really low, meaning that it is dissimilar to the gold standard, or it's the similarity to the gold standard, it, it's dissimilar because uh, less similar. It is less, less similar. similar. Well. So meaning that salient predications are important in order to be uh, more similar to the gold standard. So while when we take take out the salient, so leave on leave out saliency is that we remove all salient predications, 
and the summary ended up being uh, similar. That's a, that is what we stated in the initial so slides. So distance is the other way around. Yeah, distance is the other way around. Larger the distance, why more dissimilar is the... Why have you highlighted the highest number in the Euclidean? That's, yeah, that's, that's right. what distance I was saying. Is so distance more distance, the less similar. So that's mm -hmm. So distance that's why I got is like confused. a divergence yeah. matrix. So the more unlike or more... Uh, oh, in the Euclidean case. Okay. Most, yes. More dissimilar the vectors are, it is... Mm -hmm. uh, same <coughs> is uh, same for Jensen Shannon, which is also a distance or divergence matrix. So, Nishita, I, ha I have a question here. So, um, while one might be able to conclude that saliency is perhaps the most important feature, uh, have you given any consideration to to other features uh, in addition to the saliency? Or perhaps just other feature combinations. I think you might be able to create. Uh, this is for twelve, perhaps twelve or something different uh, combinations of features instead of just leave one out. Because um, it may be the case that there is some kind of correlation. Let's say uh, that I can see here between relevancy and connectivity, at least for cosine right. similarity. Uh, have you considered, uh, you know, combinations of more than one feature to be held out? No, I mean, that is definitely something to consider, but uh, for this uh, study, as we tested it across diseases, we also did a similar experiment for drugs, which I haven't included here, and it seems that the um, intuition or the conclusion that we make here is consistent across uh, the other 14 uh, drug concepts that we tested this across. but. Definitely, uh, whatever you're mentioning is something to consider. Um, this is this thing is just to get an insight. By doing so, uh, we want to be able to understand how can the uh, summary creation system be improved in the first case to perform or to uh, create better uh, summaries. And, and so, an another question here is: um, Is there any evaluation? Perhaps uh, Tom can can provide more insight. Is there any evaluation that's done currently on semantic Medline that tries to gain insights into uh, the importance of the features in, in creating the semantic summaries? Uh, if so, do these results uh, correlate with, with those results? Uh, again, that, that would be if, in fact, there is an evaluation, um, be it human or otherwise. Uh, no. That, uh... I think that's part of the value of this work. No, I mean, we haven't, um, so, and, and no one else has, and, and we haven't uh, evaluated um, you know, our summaries at all, partly you know, because of the, sort of the conceptual uh, roadblock of, of, of evaluating abstractive, especially semantic abstractive summaries. So, so I think this is, uh, is, a, is, a, is a, a significant first step. Um, I mean, maybe at this point, before you conclude, Nishida, I, I, a couple of questions I would have uh, from our point of view is, uh, so this was, I mean, I have two questions. <clears throat> One is that this was conducted with the, essentially with the treatment schema. Um, have you thought about, uh, you know, would, would these same techniques apply to the other schemas and what, um, so what, uh, uh, what confounds might you run into with the other schemas? I mean, one I can think is uh, for perhaps finding a, a decent gold standard. Mm. Um, uh, another might be, so other uh, thing is in the treatment schema, <clears throat> the point is with everything that's involved with treatment, I mean, the, the, most, um, <clears throat> the most important is the predication, you know, drug treats right. disease. Right. So you kind of, you kind of concentrated on that by um, essentially looking at um, drug and disease concepts. Mm -hmm. Now, I wonder in other schemas uh, whether that would um, whether that would also apply. I mean, I, you may not have thought that much about much about this, but this kind of relates to uh, Delroy's question about um, you know just using arguments and not not uh, not predicates. In the, um, I mean, it's, it's clear. I think that well, this, this doing that sort of evades the sparsity issue. But the question is, um, you know, how important 
is the or are the predi the predicate in this kind of work. I don't know if you have any any thoughts on that. I mean, when I was there, we did uh, do some initial work with the substance interaction schema as well, and uh, I don't. I mean, I can't say anything off the top of my head of any issues that I might have. Of course, creating the gold standard, we started with the treatments uh, uh, schema is because it's uh, more well understood or there's more data existing out there to conduct uh, this initial research. Um, but I think we were considering the substance interaction schema and maybe that would be the next thing to see and also okay. what Delroy was suggesting uh, combinations of such features to see. Yeah. Well, these are, uh, I mean, uh, assuming, since I think, it would, I think it would be a good idea to, you know, take this further uh, to a publication, these would be, uh, you know, uh, issues to put into the summary, mm. or and the discussion, the discussion, because people would want to know uh, how generalizable is this, right. and is it just ad hoc for this, so that's, uh, those are, are things to think about, and if you've already had some approaches to it, that's that's good. I mean, the second question I would have, uh, Nishida, is, well, I don't know, you may not have thought about this, but that is, uh, okay, so <clears throat> if saliency is the most important feature, what should we do about it? Uh, how, should we, uh, how should we go about you know, modifying or enhancing saliency in order to improve the, the quality of, right. the, uh, of the, or at least kind of what things should we try, would right. you suggest? So, Again, when I was there, when I was working with uh, Marcelo, we worked on these uh, Perl scripts that you, uh, your team had created there, and I got a chance to get an insight of what exactly happens in the summarization process and uh, how you're capturing the different uh, predications. So in the treatment schema, you make sure to capture all uh, treatments, uh, all words that um, you know, uh, are synonyms of treatments like treats, for, is used for, and things like that. So probably if, uh, the thing to um, how this information can be leveraged to uh, enhance semantic uh, medline is to start uh, from how the salient predications are captured. Um, it could be maybe enhancing uh, the different um, what do you say, the, the synonyms for treats, like uh, if, if in case we are missing out anything or uh, enhancing it from that level, uh, enhancing the schema for the summarization process uh, and uh, in doing so concentrate specifically on the uh, saliency, uh, on, on the module that creates the uh, salient predications or extracts the same salient predications from the list. Yeah, I mean, I, yeah, so I mean, currently, I think saliency, I forget exactly, but I, it looks at um, uh, one more which, right. one it more thing. looks at which is the most frequent, I think, or w which predications occur more frequently than the, uh, than the right. average, exactly. and then it gives them a, gives them a weight, and, and it could be right, yes. so of working with some sort of a measure to say how much weight should we give exactly. it, it might be. Right, I just, uh, while I was talking, I just recall that. We had spe we had uh, specified a specific threshold for uh, what yeah. do we mean by frequently occur occurring predications based on the input corpus. So maybe we could start by looking into how we s we specify this threshold. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That, that would be yeah. Uh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Good. That's uh, yeah. I'll. Let you continue. <laughs> this is good. Thank you. Uh, I have one question. Uh, maybe others are much more clear on this. So, are you saying that this last sensational measure is the most uh, differentiating? No, Dr. Uh, these are three. Because uh, these if three the value metrics, difference is, in, is the highest in that case, is that, the, the, is that any significance? The three metrics are just complementary. We are just using three different metrics. And also, these are the three metrics that I'm showing. Um, uh, displaying here because this is what the literature discusses as good measures for assessing the um, assessing a summary against a gold standard. So I'm j I'm not saying which metric is the best. Uh, if I have to make that statement, uh, going with the literature, for instance, Shannon is a good uh, metric because what they report is that it's very similar to how a human would judge a summary. Um, the so. 
the work um, made the statement because they were interested in, interested in uh, eliminating uh, humans to actually go and uh, evaluate somebody's because having human judges is um, I mean, it's it's an issue to have human judges to manually evaluate somebody, and that work discusses how that can be eliminated by using a feature such as Jensen Shannon, where uh, when they compared manual evaluations and automatic evalu evaluations using this metric, they were very comparable, or it was like 0.9 percent similar to how humans evaluate the somebody. But here, what I'm stating is that, as Dr. Reinfeldt was saying, that saliency is the most important feature. I'm concentrating on this saying that when the salient predications were removed from the summary, uh, the summary became very dissimilar to that of uh, the gold standard and meaning that when you add back the salient predications, it uh, becomes similar to the gold standard. I mean, I'm making a statement of which feature, not which metric. No, although you may want to keep in mind that the, Euclid, the Euclidean... Uh, I, uh, the, the can I contribute? I mean, can I interrupt just a second? One thing which I, in support, really, of... Um, <laughs> of this, uh, I mean, and I think the fact of, of uh, sort of having an automatic and mathematical way of pinpointing saliency, I mean, one thing is that I think is good about this and that I always, always like to see is when, um, you know, mathematics and formalism sort of uh, uh, it, it points to common sense. So, I mean, one thing we should remember is that I mean, really frequency of occurrence in, I mean, gives you I mean, very strong measure of the most important aspect in the summary. So, I mean, if you think of the worst case, if if you didn't include the most the most frequent occurring uh, predication in a summary, I mean, that would be a very bad summary, right? right. And so, if of course you, you go too high with it, I mean, it doesn't. It, it's it, it's too it's too high level. So uh, the thing is, you know, having some. Um, some middle ground uh, in looking at, at saliency. I mean, I think it, that seems to make a lot of sense. I mean, that we are able to automatically pinpoint mm -hmm. something that, you know, it, it just in a pre-theoretical sense, you know about a summary. Now, a summary includes, you know, the most important information. So, to me, it has the feeling of, um, you know, of being valuable. <laughs> Also, I also want to mention that keep in mind that the Euclidean metric, right, is sensitive to the length of the document. Right. And that's why we go to cosine similarity. Right. So if the original documents or the summaries that you're trying to compare are different in uh, length or size, right. then Euclidean system may not necessarily capture the similarity that we that is reflective of how we understand uh, right. uh, things. So, so I won't overly be guided by the Euclidean so, unless the documents are of similar sizes. I mean, that's why we go on to perform, uh, I mean, we do the similarity across different, um, mm -hmm. using different metrics and we make a, a conclusion based on, as I told you here, 20 diseases and we also have tested this for 14 drugs and um, that's why we are interested in using these different metrics. I mean, all of these are complementary, like it's trying to serve the same purpose, but uh, it is to make a more conclusive statement of what um, the intervention Yeah, right. And just to add to that, it, it's really just a sanity check. Um, it's you know very similar to what the machine learning folks would do, uh, where you build a classifier and uh, you essentially, you know, to, to evaluate how well your system is working, you would... Uh, use a naive based classifier, you use a logistic regression, you use an SVM, uh, so that uh, you are certain that your predictions are reliable uh, and not subject to quirks or dis in the distribution of the data in the corpus, uh, just, just to be sort of make a sane conclusion. Um, the, that saliency, to, to sort of follow up on Tom's point, that saliency turns out here to be an important metric. It almost directly correlates, I think, with uh, one of Nishita's slides where uh, she sort of asked the question, uh, what is a good summary? And I think the answer to that was a summary should have the most salient information in the corpus. Uh, as it turns out, the, the way that saliency has been defined uh, seems to capture that uh, as well. Yeah. I mean, yeah, true. And you can go even further, uh, uh, I mean, I think it's sort of, um, 
if you take the, if you look at the whole, uh, all of everything that uh, she has done here, I mean, considering the various, uh, the various models, I certainly agree that it seems like it was a point made that one reason for using several of them is that, you know, every each model is kind of has its quirks and its deficiencies, and this way you sort of get a vote of confidence in a way. And and um, uh, and on the other hand, I think one thing that's kind of interesting is that the um, you know the differences are not wild in any of in any of these measures with respect to the four features, which kind of says well. Um, you know, it isn't enough to just simply go in uh, and, uh, and and identify the most frequent um, either predication or or, uh, uh, or, 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 or or argument in order to get a, a you know a sort of valuable summary. You also need these other things, and they contribute. It's just that really, in the end, frequency of occurrence is the the most important. So it it sort of is nice in a way in that it it correlates with what you sort of expect common sense what you'd like to see so so I think to my mind I think I think it's, I think it's quite uh, quite good and quite valuable actually mm -hmm. so just to list the contributions of this work uh, firstly we here we propose the method for intrinsic evaluation of abstractive summarization which does not exist um, there's a lot of work where they uh, evaluate abstract uh, extractive summaries and since abstractive summary evaluation is so challenging, um, we propose this uh, new um, metric or a new way to, new method for uh, evaluating abstractive summaries. And the second thing is that we transform the uh, semantic summaries into a equivalent textual format uh, in order to overcome the misalignment problem. And uh, we evaluate the um, each of the impact of each of the features using different similarity metrics, and we also adopt the leave and out approach to be able to identify the specific influential feature in generating semantic summaries. So we identify three of the limitations amongst others that, um, the, as I told you, this specific. Uh, I mean the. Query diversity, um, like what Delroy was suggesting, this was um, con conducted across many diseases. And uh, probably if we use a more uh, diverse uh, set and also form the study for other uh, kind of uh, predications as well, we can be more uh, conclusive. That will be the next uh, step. And then uh, the second limitation is what, again, uh, they were suggesting using, instead of using the concept-based uh, bag of words model, it would be more um, better to use a fact-based or a, a semantic predications-based uh, uh, bag of words model. And uh, Nasita, just to add, so th there, there also might be several other considerations in terms of creating this bag of words model. What, what you've done initially, um, at least uh, as far as I could tell, uh, seems uh, somewhat crude in the sense that, uh, given a concept from the semantic summary, you retrieve the set of documents that contain that concept, and you use the entire abstract right. uh, to create the bag of words, right? Right. Uh, you, you could get a, a level of, of specificity, I think, that is more meaningful and informative by perhaps using the specific sentence in which right. that concept occurs. Yeah. Uh, perhaps do some, some cleaning, although not necessary, but you could do some cleaning, perhaps stop word removal and so mm -hmm. forth. Those things would be taken care of again based on the TF-IDF metric, but uh, in, uh, what I'm saying is in addition mm -hmm. to using uh, the semantic predications, perhaps uh, there could be more uh, careful thought about how the bag of words model uh, itself is constructed. But I imagine that's a cosmetic sort of thing that yeah, exactly. I think semantic medline gives us access to the specific sentence that generates these facts or semantic predications, and it's also maintained in the SEMED-DB, so I think we could, uh, in fact, use the sentences instead of the entire uh, PubMed article in this case, or the abstract in this case. Um, I th yeah, I think that's right. I would, I think in a... You know, well, we saw it somewhat, and Nishida sent me the, the, the reviewer's comments from the, the paper submitted, and I think 
just conceptually, um, you know, sort of people getting their heads around, how does this, the, you know, transferring these predications to, to a bag of words. I mean, I think that's right. The more thought has to be given to that of, you know, of justifying them and explaining exactly how it works and sort of showing examples of, oh, this is, you know, are, are, are that, the, 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 the sentences especially, and then represented by the, by the vector, do they really correlate with the, you know, the list of predications? So I, I, it seems like they do, but I think we probably need some work on, I'm just kind of expanding on what Delroy's saying, yeah, some work on trying things and explaining and justifying and stuff. So that, that really, because in a sense that's really, um, that's one of the core aspects of the contribution of this work. And so it, it's, you know, it's, it's, it is innovative and innovative things need to be thought a bit more, so. Yeah, um, and uh, the third limitation is that uh, we need to make um, other considerations for how the gold standard is being created. Uh, we use a semi-automatic approach, but probably by uh, including more domain experts uh, or uh, considering better automatic techniques or uh, manual techniques. What, 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 what other? I mean, so, I mean, it was uh, maybe use more resources. In this case, we have only, um, we, we took three um, resources in this case, but I think we could maybe consider more resources or also have it, uh, so, what we did here is that we extracted the um, facts from these resources and we presented to do domain experts from NLM to uh, establish that these, in fact, are a good representation or a gold standard representation of the treatment. So maybe it could be like presenting it to other domain experts who are outside of the institution to also. Yeah, there's an extensive, uh, you know. I think a lot of interest in inter uh, exactly. agreement and things of that nature. Yeah. Uh, Laura Arroyo's work on Chris Welty, you can look it up. Um, they, they, they have been talking about it a lot. Right. I don't know whether that solves the problem. In, in particular, I think, so, so have, you, have you talked to Tom about this? What, what does he feel on this particular issue? So, I mean, one thing is that this study was to identify uh, features that are influential in creating summaries so that we can enhance the system in the first case that is generating the summaries. Um, this is to get an insight of how the summaries look and uh, that's why we did not really um, focus on how exactly the gold standard uh, was uh, created but I mean this is trying to understand that what feature influences and I don't I mean um, so, Dr. Reinsch, like uh, with respect to creating the gold standard uh, summaries, do you? Well, have I thought. I mean, if I can say, I thought. Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, it, it, of course, it, it's very difficult to get exactly. But I thought, again, we started from um, sort of common sense point of view. Well, when you look at these um, these resources, uh, the ones like just like up to date and stuff. I mean, essentially, what. Those, those are uh, those are summaries for the physicians to get a quick glance at you know what should I do when the person has or what's the standard practice for such um, such uh, of a disease and so, so we have this text that is roughly a summary that way now what we're doing <clears throat> is we're creating when we created um, <clears throat> you know a summary of predications for the same topic treatment of the drug treatment of the disease and then we said well you know, there's a problem, we have kind of a problem of, of formal, uh, how is the underlying knowledge represented, in one case represented with text, in the other case with predications, but predications, I mean, you think of them in one sense, that they, uh, you know, the, the predications we extract and the text, they both represent some underlying abstract, you know, representation of the meaning of this sort of semantic area. So, um, so it seemed to me that yes, I mean this is the, in order to get this exactly right and decide exactly what uh, what we what we should consider to be a gold standard summary is is not easy. But overall, this seemed to me to um, to make quite a bit of sense. Right. Um, that so it seemed like 
as we say, we have, we, we, I think the one take home point here is yes, there is some, uh, well, it really it's conceptualization of how exactly we should represent knowledge, but uh, overall it seemed like this was a pretty good, uh, it was a sensible first pass that was not way out in left field that may, you know, may need some refinement. I thought, you know, you can make mistakes at every step of the way, so it, it, depending on, well, I mean, from the, from the gold standard point of view, you could choose something that's not really an adequate summary. Well, we sort of went with the, the consensus in the medical field, and, and these, are, these are very popular resources. You know, then how you represent it in a comparable way, but this, you know, we know bag of, I mean, a, a vector is a reasonable thing to do. How to represent, I mean, how, what, what exactly is the, is the relationship between an extracted predication and the underlying text? Well, lots of issues there, but I think, uh, Overall, I, I think, uh, yeah, there's probably refinements that could be made, but I think what this demonstrates is that overall it seems to, you know, it seems, it seems to tell us what we would sort of expect, and, and that's, that's a good thing. All right, so, uh, Nishita, just uh, another school of thought here, um, and I think this is very important, um, is that one, one actually might be able to uh, do away with, with having a gold standard altogether. Um, and uh, I'm pretty sure I've seen in the literature uh, at least one author uh, made the argument that a good summary ought to be highly related to the initial uh, search results set in the first place. That's what so, I was getting to, like the literature uh, which, where they perform extract. Let him finish. Well, uh, let me, let me, so if it's true that a good summary uh, is ought to be highly related to the initial search result set, then one might be able to take the initial list of search results, let's say 2100 in, in the example that you showed, and uh, and perhaps represent that as a vector in itself. Right. I mean, one might be able to create uh, a, a topic model, let's say, using uh, latent Dirichlet allocation, or perhaps create uh, a, a set of, of word to vec vectors uh, that that abstract the the knowledge contained in the original search result set, and then of course create your your vectors from the semantic summary, and then compute the the relatedness or overlap or you can go to a full fledged machine learning or even deep learning approach where you try to predict uh, how well the set of semantic summaries uh, uh, map to the gold standard, and that would actually allow you to, to not have to rely on, on human-generated or human-curated gold standards in the first place. So no, I, uh, should, uh, I, I should add that, uh, as you may know, that, the, uh, that is the approach, essentially, of uh, Liz Workman, who, uh, who, was, who was here and who she to talk to, and who was actually, um, uh, I was actually on her dissertation committee, and um, so I think it's interesting, and it has been proposed. I, I still think, in defense of an independent gold standard, um, you know that that I mean, it, it's a little harder to get your head around the fact of. Um, I mean, I, I think there's a lot to it, but I think in, initially our idea um, when the Sheeta first came here, and we weren't able to pursue it for various reasons with, with Liz's system and stuff, was we were going to compare. Um, you know, the SEMREP type of, of summarization and then the Liz Workman type of summarization, which is essentially what you, what you, what you propose, comparing what you get to the initial, the initial uh, query. And um, so we were going to see, I mean, there, it's not, it, it's a viable alternative, but it's not clear to me that, uh, you know, it, it's a, a slam dunk that one is necessarily better than the other. So. Uh, I think that's a whole other area that could be could be pursued. That, that's, I mean, that's the reason we use a gold standard is because sort of common sense wise, that's I mean that's the what gold standards are, right? Okay, here's something independently that is considered good. Now, how close do we come to that? But I agree, it's not the only way to think about it. That, that's that's fair. I, I think I I would be interested in seeing uh, you know some the use of a, a different representation, a different model. Uh, on the uh, search result set, um, particularly if, if you could do a dimension reduction using uh, PCA or SVD to get the, the set of 
uh, terms in the original search results set down to 300 or 5,000 or so, some number of, of important words, uh, and then perhaps maybe even do the same on the, on the semantic summary. But again, that's a different uh, body of work. Um, uh, yeah. Right, right. It, it, I, mean, I think the only thing I would point out there is that, yeah, that is um, actually, and I mean, the thing is, Liz Workman has, she still actually, we're collaborating, and she had a system that was sent, was based on, on you know, essentially that, that, uh, that method, but um, we had problems, she had problems with, she did it herself, and she implemented it herself, and she had problems, remember the sheet when we looked at it, we had problems with actually running it and getting it to work, but no, you're 100% right, it's a, uh, it's, it's, I, I want to put it not only the viable method, but the Zoom did her whole dissertation on that. Okay, yeah, that's great. It, it, it definitely is out there. Yeah. And I mean, the interesting thing is that we, we started, remember, Nishida, we started to do that, and then while well, there were practical yeah. problems of, uh, of, of actually pursuing that. So, yeah, so, yeah absolutely. Yeah, so, this is like. I mean, this, this is the first initial step. I mean, it can go uh, based on the discussions. Uh, you can build upon uh, what we well, have I think you got a lot of inputs uh, yeah. uh, for the paper that you write, right? Yes, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Are there any questions? Uh, I think it, I mean, you know what it shows is, you know, I mean, I, of course, you could, uh, I mean, there would be plenty of, uh, we have plenty of, of material, and I'm doing for for continuing this work, you know, as a as a PhD. Uh, <laughs> 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 so, how hard is it to create the case of people from the world standards you have? Um, because it could be another alternative way, so that you have a normalizer. Right. So. The way to create, again, we would have to leverage what NLM has created. So you get, once you get the text from these resources, you can just treat it as a PubMed article and perform the same things. We start off by meta mapping it, and then we go about to create, use SEMREP to extract predications from. So again, I think by doing this, we bias it to be, uh, uh, have uh, a knowledge or answers based on uh, the structured knowledge that NLM has. So once we get the textual, um, uh, the I mean we don't, so what we do is in the semantic predications itself we are only interested in the concepts. So we don't go about uh, first creating the semantic predications for the gold standard and then getting the concept but straight away meta map it and derive the important concepts from the textual format. But yeah, I mean uh, <coughs> creating predications or extracting facts from the gold standard is straightforward with the system that I have uh, set up now. It's the pipeline where you, once you get the text, we can treat it as documents or uh, PubMed articles and you can perform the same steps to... Yeah, the problem you can use something like heat drive, focus, summarize, right? Yeah. Triple thing, even, even I mean, one thing I, I can add there is that uh, it really in defense of using uh, arguments. What I mean, so uh, you know, the SEMREP quality, the SEMREP initial extraction of the predications, uh, how well that does, I mean, contributes to this. And we didn't really want to make this a uh, you know a, an evaluation of SEMREP itself, but rather the rather the, fi the, the final uh, the summarization. So. One val one reason for using predications is we is that this sort of sides up the fact that uh, you know some uh, recall errors well and even precision but it, it is it's weak, weakest on recall so um, <clears throat> so in a sense then doing you know just getting the the, the the arguments from the gold standard in a way probably is a better way of, of evaluating actually the summary rather than evaluating SEMREP quality, which it was not the, 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 the goal of the project. Is it let me ask you a very basic question. So, so what are we comparing for similarity? I mean, those are bag of what? Vectors. Uh, it's yeah, vectors of what? Vectors of concepts, words? Vectors of concepts. 
I mean, vectors of words, not concepts. Like, we get the concept from each subject. And then you expand the concepts it, to words. Yes, using uh, the predications that, I mean, the knowledge or the context that it co occurs with, and then we convert it into vector, vector representation using the uh, TFIDF uh, index or anything. And then we. But, but they are words, right? They're yes, so normal document words. They're yes, not concepts, no predication, no, no nothing. They are just words. That's why we had to do this in order to um, perform the comparison. Yes, yeah, so, uh, Dr. Prasad, that's actually a very, very good point. Um, uh, a few things that, that we talked about uh, in the beginning was uh, to represent a concept in terms of a distribution of words, a concept in terms of a distribution of other concepts, and then at an even richer level to represent a concept as a distribution of semantic predications and then possibly computing similarity uh, across all of those three different representations. Um, in the end, uh, you know, the good, good starting point was uh, for Nishita to start with the, uh, with the, the words, just to treat uh, each word independently and create the Spago words model. But there are certainly richer levels of, of representation that that could be considered that we actually discussed in the, in the beginning. Right, but, but, but the starting point is actually comparing collections of predications, right? Right. And then we eventually get down to words. words. But we could explore alternative paths is That's something right. that we can still do, right? Yes. Okay. Yes, um, so, like, I think the idea was right that we wanted, I mean, the how to represent, you know, the predication is, uh, <clears throat> Is a you know is a quite a problem in itself. So I think the thing is if I you know, if I say right. So we sort of thought well that isn't our real our real goal. So let's take a kind of a you know a, a low hanging fruit approach and and see what we can do with that. But yeah. it's that's all you know it's quite and, and a subject in itself is how to how to accurately as I said use the predications to represent what is actually expressed in the text. So that could. There's certainly more work to be done there. So, sorry, let me ask you. Say it. Uh, I have actually two questions. So, you get the vector of the actually words for each particular as your own concepts. Then, actually, how do you <coughs> measure the similarity word by word, or I mean, the order, the sequence of the word is mattering or not? This is one question. The second question is that. For the similarity of the predicate, apart from the string similarity, any kind of semantic similarity for the similarity of the predicate? Yes. What? I mean the vector of the predicate. So the vector is initially, I mean, it, it consists of concepts which we transform into a distribution of words. Yes. So when you say predicate, predication is a triple. No, I mean, it can corresponds to what we predicate, yes? Yeah, can, can I chime in here? Um, so uh, this is an excellent question, actually. Uh, uh, if my understanding is correct, uh, the concern here is whether or not we are taking advantage of any kind of explicit semantics yes. uh, in the distribution of the words to compute semantic similarity. The answer is no. What we, what's being done here is uh, Nishida is using core ideas from information retrieval mm -hmm. that the sem sem semantic similarity between two, two constructs can be captured by implicit semantics in the distribution of, of words. Obviously, if Nishida were to represent, let's say, a concept in terms of other concepts, uh, then you, you obviously would be able to leverage uh, the UMLS, let's say, uh, to compute semantic relatedness across the concepts in, in two distributions. Um, that has not been done, and uh, that obviously points to uh, the, the you know, possibility of further enhancement that could leverage uh, richer semantics, explicit semantics, for, for doing this sort of thing. Um, I might have done something along those lines in my own uh, PhD dissertation work. Yeah. Uh, so actually, I didn't get 
uh, Google standard, how you get uh, data set. So at the beginning, you said that there are two different types of evaluation, right. intrinsic and extrinsic, for uh, right. the evaluation of summary. And it is very subjective. So the gold standard in, the, in this uh, study, you get it from NIH? No, it was semi-automatically created. First, I kind of uh, identified the resources, uh, three resources, like three, uh, you can say, websites, uh, up-to-date, um, Micromedics and uh, ACP Spark Medicine, and um, I also, uh, you know, checked with uh, medical experts from um, our school itself, and they did mention that these are good resources for uh, understanding information about treatments for diseases. And then what I did was I used the um, Jericho uh, Java uh, Jericho library, and I uh, extracted or cro uh, parsed these uh, web pages to extract. Uh, information that was present in structured and semi-structured format and once I get this data I use MetaMap to identify the uh, medical concepts and then I sent it back to NLM to you know kind of uh, establish or confirm the fact that this is a so that's what I was saying considering alternatives for creating uh, gold standard or you know exploring gold standard altogether and because you know that even human want to create a gold standard for summarization, then the, the data set are, too di are different. Right. So that's why this is a critical point in this kind of a study for summarization. Exactly. I mean, there's, uh, in extracted summarization, uh, uh, so like as Jira was saying, there's a work that suggests that since creating gold standard is so hard, it would be um, better to compare the summaries that to the actual input itself. But in extractive summary, extractive summarizations, the summary is created by using the exact sentences like verbatim. And uh, while comparing these two uh, using document similarity metrics, you can easily interpret the results. But it would be interesting to see whether the same holds good for abstractive summarization where you don't actually use the sentences. The words are paraphrased or rephrased, or in this case, they are just predication. Right. I mean, I think the, the thing we have <clears throat> is the, that in um, summarization evaluation, the, the major problem in creating a gold standard is, uh, is inter-annotator agreement. Right. Um, you know, I mean, in lower level linguistic analysis, I mean, you can agree, okay, what does this sentence say? I mean, that, that, you know, people will, are much more likely to agree with that. But when it comes to a summary, I mean, is this a better summary than that one? Um, you know, humans do not have a high level of, of, uh, of inter-annotator agreement. So right. that really is a major, major problem. So we sort of sidestep that by saying, well, at least for this area, everybody or all physicians agree. I mean, you have to pay for it. As a matter of fact, the micromedics right. is a you know is a good is a good summary of, of drug treatment of disease. So, I mean, there there are, there are a number of sort of practical matters that come in come into play here, and then you know issues about how you formally represent it. Uh, well, that's another issue. Yeah. 